Hey gang, we are in Sacramento, California, and we are at East Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery here, just west of the city. And we have today a story about quite the Hollywood scandal. And I'm betting, I'm betting most of you haven't heard about this one now. Everyone knows Gene Harlow and right scandals associated with Gene Harlow and her husband Paul Byrne, very mysterious either murder or suicide, but there was a third woman who was married to Paul Byrne, his original wife, and they were still married. And there's a whole triangle story here that I found very interesting when Kimberly from our channel, who used to mod with us, she sent me this story and I was immediately glued, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. I found her grave, she's right over the the hill here. So let's take a walk. This looks like a beautiful old cemetery. We don't find a lot of those on the on the west or the west coast, mostly memorial parks, of which this is, but it's got some it's got some beautiful stones. So yeah, 1932 was the year. It was September 5th in Beverly Hills. And there was a 42-year-old man who was found in the bathroom, crumpled on the floor with a bullet hole to the head. And he was just not anybody. He was not just somebody. He was Gene Harlow's husband, Paul Byrne, as I mentioned. What's interesting is that they didn't call police the servants. They called MGM Studios the MGM fixers. When there was a murder in those days that was common to get ahead of the story, clean up the scene, so we could cover up the scandal if there was one before police arrived. And that's exactly what happened in this situation. They had about, like I say, about two hours to, oh, we'll just say fix, remove, and destroy any evidence. Evidence for what? Well possible murder probable murder they did find a note which was really suspect I mean the note said it was allegedly from Paul that said dearest dear unfortunately this is the only way to make good the frightful wrong I have done you and wipe out my abject humiliation I love you Paul you understand last night was only a comedy. And that was the end of the note. Very suspect, right? Most think that the note was written by somebody else and was planted, and that's probably true. He really actually had a common law wife from before. Her name was Dorothy Millette, and this was all coming out now. And this, the initial story was that she was mentally imbalanced and maybe she came to kill him. There was a woman that was seen the night before matching her description visiting Paul. All of this came to light when authorities found Paul Burns' Los Angeles insurance advisor, a man named George G. Clarkin and they talked to him and he confirmed he said yeah we have a a trust set up for Dorothy and then a lawyer in New York also confirmed the secret marriage Paul Byrne Dorothy Millette he said he had drawn up the will for Dorothy a decade earlier they did find Paul's sister who filled in the rest of the story. And she told, you know, she told them what happened. Now, Paul had originally met Dorothy in Toronto, Canada when they were both young and working as actors, I mean very young, in a theater company and they married and they moved to New York City. And they moved there so Paul could pursue a career in stage management. 
he was very good, but then something went wrong. Dorothy's health took a turn for the worst, and they moved her into a sanitarium. And that's when Paul moved to California to follow his destiny. Of course, Dorothy did not follow. She stayed in the sanitarium. Well, Paul, as we all know, worked for MGM. He rose to the ranks, famous guy. He built his career up there. But interestingly, he really was a good guy because he supported Dorothy back home. He would send her checks, $300 a month, a lot of money back then. Put her up at the hotel, very famous hotel there, that the likes of Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford and all kinds of people stayed. It wasn't cheap, but he was taking care of her. They were exchanging letters a lot. So he was, while he was married to Jean Harlow, he was supporting his his wife. So I guess he was a bigamist, right? And then you have to think, you know, what was that marriage all about? He was a scrawny guy. Why would this 20-something-year-old 20 20 year Jean Harlow, why would she, you know, and she was like a sex fiend. She was just, <laughs> so it just didn't make any sense. And that's why the tabloids were all over it. That whole marriage was under the microscope the entire time. It was just really weird. So the investigation went to Dorothy, where is she? Did she do it? And they started looking hard for her. But she had disappeared. She was last seen on a Sacramento riverboat called the Delta King after checking out of the Plaza Hotel in Sacramento at noon the day after Paul Burns' death. So she was on the riverboat. Maybe she killed him. Maybe she was the spurned wife. Maybe she rushed back to get on that riverboat or actually it was noon the next day where she checked out of the hotel. So that was kind of all a push, but they were still looking for her. They thought she might have fled to another state. Maybe she faked her death. But then nine days later on September 14th, two fishermen found her body. There's a lot of sloughs and deltas, and she was found in this Georgiana slough way down. It's kind of, it was kind of weird. And again, she was last seen at the hotel checking out. She got on the, on the, the riverboat and then she disappeared. So everyone thought, well, she committed suicide. But who knows? But her body was found and kind of closed the case at that point on her. And they're like, it's a suicide. So then the MGM fixers really got going. Let's smear Paul Byrne. And they said, you know, he was suicidal and they brought friends in. He was talking about suicide. And then they went so far as to talk about his private parts and how unworthy he was or ill-equipped. They brought his doctor in who tried to protect his, the memory of Paul. He was a friend. But he did allude that Paul was tiny Paul. So anyway, it was just a dastardly smear campaign. This guy's dead. And it's all to protect Gene Harlow. So Paul's dead, Dorothy's dead. And Gene Harlow goes on. And it's not a year later she gets married. She was not one to not be married. And then she slid down her health. They said it was maybe a scarlet fever led to kidney failure. I say everything was made up in those days, guys. Now, come on. <laughs> she died of kidney failure, but how about the drinking and partying? Of course, MGM's, you know, going to say 
So if you believe that, then I got a bridge to sell you. But she did die of kidney failure. Very young, just a few years later, I think it was. And that was it. So it's a real mystery on who killed Paul Byrne and why. Maybe Jean was kind of done with him. She was having all kinds of affairs. And maybe they needed to take Dorothy out. Who knows? And we'll talk about that a little more. Her grave is right up here among these, among all these graves here. A forgotten grave, a forgotten soul. Right here. At least it has the name Burn on it that everyone recognized. And here it is. No one's been here. Forgotten. Very sad. She's a beautiful woman. Dorothy Millette Byrne, 1886-1932. So yeah, you do have to wonder. She dies nine days later, she probably got the news. I mean, good chance she got the news that Paul was dead. She knew that she was out of the will, it is said, so. She wasn't gonna get an inheritance. She was living a decent life. She would probably go destitute, so maybe she did commit suicide. No one knows, right? But let's just think about all this. This, the scandalous circumstances, more what, you know, a lot of the things we're talking about were concealed by MGM for years. Jean Harlow would not speak of Paul after her death, and we talked about what happened to her. Interestingly, Paul Byrne is at Inglewood Park Cemetery. So instead, she was buried here. I don't know, you, you, you have to go through all the scenarios. There has to be a connection. I mean, Dorothy would have to have gone to Beverly Hills, kill Paul in the wee hours of the morning, and then return to San Francisco, right? Before noon, in order to be seen checking out of the Plaza Hotel. And then somebody would have probably seen her come and go if she came early in the morning or the middle of the night. It's not impossible, but it's pretty improbable. So did she kill herself or was Dorothy Millette murdered by people hired by the MGM fixers or was it the MGM fixers who did it to cover up the entire story? Well, we'll probably never know. It's quite a, quite a mystery, guys. And that's the story of Dorothy Millette. All right, thanks for watching. It was interesting to come out here and find her grave and tell you the story. So I'll see you on the next one.